Good afternoon and aloha. Mark's spirit is with us, not only in the picture, but in all of us being here and in the lay that we're wearing. To Sammy, Matthew, Kylo, Eric, Naomi, Gary, and the entire Takai Ohana, which is all of us. Um, I am privileged to be here with you today to commemorate and to, to uh, recall what a wonderful person Mark was. I worked at Newmark for over 20 years when he was in the state legislature and I was lieutenant governor and going forward to when we both served in Congress. I considered Mark to be one of my closest allies and I affectionately referred to him as my younger brother. I have many memories of Mark, but one that I'd like to share with you occurred last year when the two of us went to Selma, Alabama, along with dozens of our colleagues from both the House and the Senate to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, that historic march that was led by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And in that march in 1965, some of, you, some of you may still remember the picture that appeared in the New York Times the following day, and it showed Dr. King wearing white, a white carnation lay along with some of the other leaders of the march. He had become friends, Dr. King had become friends with uh, Reverend Abraham Akaka, who was the brother of our colleague, Dan Akaka, and they had become friends. Reverend Akaka sent the lay to the marchers to uh, stand in solidarity and peace with the marchers. So here we were, fast forward last year, Mark decides that we should commemorate that and to uh, carry out that tradition of aloha and love that exemplified uh, the march in 1965. And so he wanted to make sure that every single colleague from the House and Senate had fresh lay from Hawaii and he enlisted me in that cause. So over 100 lay were ordered, and they were all to be flown into Selma, uh, Alabama, and there we were, but uh, the lay were not there. So there was a little glitch. Uh, we had absolutely no idea where the lay were in transit from the West Coast to uh, where we were. But I looked at Mark and I said, you are the National Guard guy. You know logistics. I'm sure you can take care of this. So for the next day or so, he, his phone was glued to his ear. I know that there were many people who wondered what was, you know, who was Mark talking to all that time as he tried to figure out where these lay were. And um, sure enough, he got it done. The lay arrived just in time. We have pictures of him opening up the boxes of orchid lay. And one very special lay was presented to John Lewis, our colleague, who was one of the original marchers. And John got a carnation lay, which was very similar to the white carnation lay that Dr. King had worn 50 years before. And as we marched on across the uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge, holding hands uh, with our Keiki Okaina, the first African-American president, Barack Obama, it was a moment. Mark did everything with a lot of joy, uh, determination, and most of all, aloha. I know how much Mark admired Dr. Martin Luther King. And so I want to close with a quote from Dr. King. It's from a speech that he gave in 1967 called, A Time to Break Silence. I quote, now let us begin. Now let us rededicate ourselves to the long and bitter but beautiful struggle for a new world. This is a calling of the sons of God, and our brothers wait eagerly for our response. Shall we say the odds are too great? Shall we tell them the struggle is too hard? Will our message be that the forces of American life militate against their arrival as full men, and we send our deepest regrets? Or will there be another message of longing, of hope, of solidarity with their yearnings, of commitment to their cause, whatever the cost. The choice is ours. And though we might prefer it otherwise, we must choose in this crucial moment of human history." End quote. We are at a crucial moment of human history, and we all know that Mark would have wanted us to do the right thing.
Mahavanoi Loa.